All right. Set thine house in order. Second Kings 20, verse number one. Second Kings 20, verse number one. Order in the house. One of the things that the devil hates most about the church is God's order in the church. Hallelujah. Father God, before we get started, uh, I guess somebody want to hear this word. I guess somebody don't want to hear this word. Now, I'm just kidding. A lot of times people have issues with their uh, the internet and what uh, wherever they are, and they have weak, weak um, uh, internet service, and so it kicks them off, and it does that a lot. So, but before we get started, Father God, thank you for the word of God tonight. Thank you for keeping us, leading us, guiding us into all truth. Oh God, that word is truth. We bless you. We magnify you. We glorify your holy name for you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised tonight. Oh God, we pray that you, we pray that you speak to us in such a way that it will remove every burden, destroy every yoke. Let the anointing of the living God flow freely, unhindered, and uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic force. In the name of Jesus, we bind the enemy right where he is. We bind him in his tracks. We bind all distractions and depression and discouragement tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God, for the Holy Spirit, who is the great teacher, is here today, tonight, to teach us the word of God. This is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. One of the things that the devil hates the most about the church is God's order in the church. The enemy hates order. He hates order. And the opposite of order is chaos. He hates order, but he loves chaos. So God does things decently and in order because he is order. Again, I have to give uh, some credit to Pastor G. Craig Lewis, who uh, taught this message a couple of weeks ago. And I gleaned from this message, from his message, and put together uh, put together this message today. Uh, so some of the things are verbatim on what he said and some of the things uh, the Lord gave me to say. Uh, to write so so anyway let's keep let's let's get into it when you are uh supreme first and created from nothing but the creator of everything you are established order he is the established order if you want to know what the order of god is look at him john 1 and 3 says all things were made by him without him there was not anything made that was made when god does it or says it it is law and order when god does it or say it is not a suggestion it is not a suggestion it is law and it is order now we can choose to follow it or not but when god says it it is law and it is order he says and does or whatever he says and does becomes the way to say and do it Whatever God says and does becomes the way to say and do it. Anything outside of that is disorder or chaos, or it can lead to chaos, or it is out of order. If we say it other than the way God says it, it's out of order. If we do it other than the way God does it, it's out of order. Now, here's the, here's the thing. There's, there's, there is nothing wrong with recognizing when you are out of order. The thing, the, the issue comes in when we recognize that when, we are out of order and yet we still remain out of order because we 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 are, we are imperfect beings we are human beings which means we are imperfect beings so sometimes we'll get things wrong Sometimes we are get things twisted. Sometimes we get things messed up. But when we realize and recognize that we are out of order, that's when we need to understand how God says it and how he does it and come in line into alignment with him. So in his own sovereignty, he is his word, and his words are our order. Can I say that one more time? In his own sovereignty, God, he is his word, and his word or his words are his or our order. John 1, it says this, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. It goes on to say, all things were made by him, or without him there was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man, the light that shined in darkness. That was the true light that lighted every man that came into the world. And the verse 14, we drop all the way down and said, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld him as the only begotten son, full of grace grace and truth. We're talking about the word becoming flesh. We're talking about the order of God. We're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Watch this now. Now, I don't even know 
what happened here and how this thing covered up my my uh but anyway we're, we're gonna get through it in like manner god is ordered in like manner when god created when god created each of us he fit us into his order god fit us into his order uh and in or in an order that would carry forth his plan God put us in an order that will carry forth his plan. The devil fights to get us out of order so that we will live our lives searching for answers and searching for paths and validations and approvals. We must get all of these things from the father of lights. James 1 and 17 says, every good and perfect gift comes uh, is, is, is from above and cometh down from the father of life in whom there's no variableness, no shadow of turning. There's no variableness in God, and, and meaning there is no change in God. There's no turning of God. If he said it, he's going to do it. If he, if he spoke, he's going to bring it to pass. So God has placed us here in the earth and gave it, given us an order, and we must fight to, 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 to follow that order. And at the same time, the enemy fights us to get us out of order, to keep us from fulfilling the plan of God. No, there's no, there's no greater victory that the enemy can have other than sending us to hell or other than dragging us to hell or influencing us to get to, to deny the Lord Jesus Christ so that we will go to hell. There's no other great victory that the enemy can have than to have to, to cause a church to fall into uh, uh, fall out of order and into chaos. And that eventually would not bring the glory to God. The enemy creates chaos by causing dissension, division, jealousy, envy, and strife. And a lot of time he does this by whispering and putting even thoughts into the mind. This is why it is important for us as believers to pray and to practice 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and which, which means we need to implement the spirit of love in all that we do. And when the enemy won't be able to gain an inch when we do, implement the spirit of love when we don't then things can fall out of order the bible says this in first corinthians chapter 13 it says love conquers all love has the ability to overcome anything that the enemy throws at you check out check it out in your relationships in your home and in, 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 in your everyday action with, with with people and when people come across you the wrong way when people say things the wrong say the wrong things to you or rub you the wrong way as we say if you implement the spirit of love into that situation i guarantee you that love will overcome that situation watch this whenever we see a sign on the bathroom or in a restaurant or a gas station or anywhere for that matter that says out of order that means it is not working properly so when the church is out of order, that means it is not working properly. If something is not working properly, it means that it is it is it is not functioning in the perfection in which God has created it to function, or it is not functioning in the order that God has desired for it to function. So therefore, if we are out of order, we are not moving in the direction that God would have us to move. We are just we, we are just what, what, what they say we're just spinning our wheels and not going anywhere. Just like the children of Israel, the murmuring and complaining brought them to a place of being out of order. And as they were out of order, they kept going around the same mountain again and again for 40 years. And they couldn't get to the place that God had desired for them to go. We already understand and know that it was an 11-day journey from Egypt all the way to the promised land. But it took them 40 years to get there. Why? Because they were out of order. Yes, out of order will keep you in place. Out of order, you can't get anywhere. Out of order, you got to be in order in the things of God, in your house and in God's house. Uh -huh. Who's that church? I would say, say amen, somebody. Yeah, boy, let's keep going here. Listen, so the devil hates order. The devil hates order. The devil hates the order of God because it was this order that removes him from the position and the presence of God. Even today, so many have started ministries to avoid the God, to avoid godly authority that, that, uh, that disapproved of their plans. They were not allowed to do what they wanted to do in churches. So they rebelled and started their own churches out of order. This is exactly what Lucifer did in heaven in Isaiah verse 14 and verse uh, chapter 14, verse number 14. But I want to read, I'm gonna read a few more verses to you because to get a get a good understanding of what the enemy did 
and what got him kicked out of heaven. Listen to this right here. Give me one second. Yeah. So Isaiah chapter 14, we're going to start with verse number verse number 11, the verse number 12. He says, how are thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? I'll tell you how he fell. He got out of order. O Lucifer, O son of the morning, how are that cut down to the ground which did weaken the nation? For, for thou hast said, thou hast said, hold on, let me let it. Thank you. Thank you, Jamaica. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. And I will sit also among the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Verse 14 says, I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. You Now you know you're out of order when you're trying to be like God. That's the issue with a lot of people today. They're trying to be God. And see, the enemy said, they are they're, they're, they're trying to be their own God. They're out of order. They will not. They will not prosper. They will not. They will not prosper. They will not grow. They will not. Do, so yet, verse fifteen says, says, "Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit." Verse sixteen: They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, "Is this the man that hath made the nation to earth to tremble, that they shake?" The kingdoms, they will look at him and say, "Oh, he ain't nothing, but he he caused a lot of chaos. Why? Because he got out of order, and God had to get rid of him." Listen to this: right the majority of people that left churches this way are simply at home scrolling through the internet to find messages that fit their feelings. Boy, I'm gonna tell you right there. A lot of times, and sometimes we can be even guilty of that ourselves. We don't want to hear a hard message. A lot of times we don't want to hear a hard message or a message that challenges challenges us. We turn into we have a tendency to tune into people who do who we know is not going to preach a message that's going to challenge your flesh or challenge your way of thinking. We tune into tune into people that will that will coddle us and tune into people that will that will that will um. Uh, make it easy for us to hear. The Bible says that in the last days, people will not endure sound doctrine, but it will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They will gather to themselves teachers having itching ears. Listen to this. I'm going to say this again. The majority of people that left churches this way are simply at home scrolling through the internet to find messages that fit their feelings. All the while missing important ordinances or order that, that comes from the fellowship. Hebrews 10 and, and, and 25 says, not forsaking the assembly of yourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Listen, let's keep going. So the fellowship of believers, the fellowship of believers. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Bear with me. I don't know what changed my slides, but I didn't have it. Anyway, all right, so the ordinances that were given to the New Testament church are important to God and should not be ignored or downplayed. Sure, you can attempt to do them on your own, but God created the fellowship of believers for a reason. He prescribed his ordinances to be carried out by um, pres uh, and, pres and presided over by men he chose and anointed to do it. First Timothy 4 and 14, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by the prophecy with the land on of hands of the presbytery. I want to say this, that some things you are not going to get from God if you are not part of the body. Oh, yes, and amen. Some things you're not going to get from God because you are not part. If you say that you are saved and a believer of Jesus and love him, yet you do not participate with the local assembly, some of your prayers and your blessings will be hindered or go unanswered. Why? Because you are being disobedient to the order of God. He has called us to be. No man is an island. We read it. We, I think we said somebody said it on a. On Sunday, uh, so so you, the, the the hand cannot say to the foot, "I don't need you." Uh, the eyes cannot say to the mouth, "I don't need you." We are all one body, and then you, your, your your hand is not separated from your body and doing its own thing. You have to be a, in order for your body to be in harmony. All the body has all the. All the functions of the body has to be functioned in harmony to make things happen and to function properly. Hebrews 20, uh, 10 and 25, do not forsake assembling. 
do not forsake assembling, which means we are to assemble. But furthermore, it is a wise word. It is a wise word written to protect us from the attacks of the enemy. Watch this now. It, it protects us from our heart from being hardened. Because if you're out there by yourself and you're alone and you're away from the body of Christ and you are not fellowshipping and you are not learning to be, you, you are not learning to fellowship and get along with people, your heart can become hardened. Ask anybody that has spent any time in solitary confinement. They, 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 they your, their heart become hardened in such a way that they, they. Uh, have learned how to cope without other human beings around. We are, we are, we are, we are sociable creatures. God has created us to depend on one another. No man is an island. Even the word of God says it is not good for man to be alone. So you're out there by yourself. You're unprotected. So God has called us to be together as a, as an assembly so that we can be protected from the attacks of the enemy. All right, let's keep going. All right. And also we, when we assembly at, when we assemble as a body of Christ, we are to stir each other up in love and encourage one another. That's the good thing. That's the good thing about assembling once a, once a, once a week. We do it once a week. We do it uh, and sometimes twice a week. We do it twice a week on the first and third uh, week, but we do it once a week on the second and fourth because we do we have church on first uh, first and third Sundays and also Bible study that week. So we assemble uh, we assemble together to encourage one another. Amen. Somebody. Okay. So church auxiliaries and leaders, divine order in the church. People are ordained and put in place to fulfill certain leadership roles. Listen to these scriptures. Numbers uh, chapter 11, verse number 16. The Lord answered Moses. He said, bring me 70 men from Israel known to you as elders and officers of the people. Take them to the tent of meeting and have them stand there with you. Then I will come down and speak with you there. I will take some of the spirit who is on you and put the spirit on them, capital S. They will help you bear the burden of the people so that you do not have to bear it by yourself. Oh, God, I thank you for that right there. I thank you for that revelation right there. He said, the Lord has the most, bring me 70 men from Israel known to you as elders and officers. So who appointed them as elders and officers? I'm sure Moses went out and pointed, uh, uh, and, and pointed out elders and officers, meaning that he could trust, meaning that he can trust men who were full of, men who, uh, were full of wisdom and understanding. L listen to this right here. Acts chapter 6 says this right here. Therefore, brethren, select from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and of wisdom. Then we can appoint those men over this business, and we as apostles can, can will continue to devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Here's the thing. God allows us to uh, select uh select leaders in the church uh -huh, based upon discretion that they are filled with the spirit and they have good reputation and they have good wit and they and they have wisdom let's keep going here i'm almost done so so watch this people that have been appointed to positions of leadership in the church should be respected and allowed to lead uh, this is god's order i'm gonna say that again people that have been appointed to positions of leadership in the church should be respected and allowed to lead. This is God's order. Listen, church leadership is or should be structured in such a way that it eliminates issues and support the vision and at the same time bring glory to God. Can I say that one more time? Church leadership is or should be structured in such a way that it eliminates issues. That means that we should, we should be able to come to the table and sit down and debate. The Bible says this right here, come and let us reason together. Let us talk about the matters that 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 that, uh, that are issues with the church, and let us hash these things out. It takes leaders to do that. It takes leaders that are full of wisdom. It takes leaders that are full of the Holy Ghost. It takes leaders that are full of God and understanding and of good reputation to do that to run the church, to run the house of God. All right, let's keep going. So God is pleased when there is order. God will bless the church when it functions within the parameters that he desires. You see the title up there? It says, God doesn't bless mess. Well, it says Hebrews 13 and verse number 17. He says this right here. Obey. 
Oh, oh, I probably lost a lot of people right there when I said obey, because it seems like that's a foreign word nowadays to obey. There's nothing wrong with the word obey, because obedience, the Bible says, is better than what? If you just better than what, Dick? It's better than sacrifice. Amen, somebody. Yep, so obedience is better than sacrifice. So see, he says, obey your leaders and submit to them. Hebrews 11, I mean, uh, 13, verse 7. Let me slow down just a little bit. I'm a little bit excited. Hebrews uh, 13, verse number 17 says, obey your leaders and submit to them, for they watch over your souls as those who must give an account. They have to answer to God. He says, you have to realize that your pastor has to answer for God, for the things that he had preached or had his conduct, how he acted and conducted himself out in public, he has to answer to God because a leader, he is in the military. This is what we call a leader. A leader is, in, uh, we always ask this question. We always say, um, what is the best way to lead? We always ask uh, people that, 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 that who want to be leaders in, in the military, we ask them the question, what is the best way to lead? And if, if they don't answer the right way, uh, they would never, they, they, at that point in time, they wouldn't become a leader. And the answer to the question is, the best way to lead is by example. That's the best way to lead. And then we go on to say, not only is that the best way to lead, that is the only way to lead. Yes, we are human, fallible beings. We will make mistakes, and we need grace. Your leaders need grace. But the leaders need to be above reproach. They need to be a people of good reputation, and they need to be a people who are living their lifestyle as a reflects the character of Christ. So let me, again, let's go here. Hebrews, obey your leaders and submit to them for they watch over your soul as one who must give an account. Watch over, you know, over your souls. There's two things God revealed to me about watching over your souls. And that means I must preach the gospel and the full, the, the, the gospel and the full and whole counsel of God. I can't leave anything out. I can't just preach on money. I can't just preach on church government. I can't just preach on uh, uh, healing. I can't just preach on, I have to preach the whole counsel of God. I have to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. He says, to this end, Allow them to lead you with joy. He says, allow them to lead you with joy. You must allow the leaders of the church to lead you with joy and not with grief, for that would be of no advantage to you. He said, that's not of, of your advantage. Why? Because they watch for your soul and they give and they have to give an account. Another way I watch for your soul is through prayer. Every morning. 4 a.m., I'm getting up and I'm praying for the body of Christ. I'm praying specifically for Mount Sinai. I'm praying for those that come, that he brings to my thoughts and, to my, and, and put it in my spirit to pray for, because that's what he has called me to do. One thing that you understand about your pastor, Mount Sinai, is he is a praying man of God. All right, so Deuteronomy 28, verse 2 said, all these blessings shall come upon you and over, overwhelm you when you do what? When you obey the voice of the Lord. Blessings of God will come on us when we are in order or in line with the voice of God. That's good teaching right there. All right, God's order, God's order. God's, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to close. Uh, 20, uh, we get 728. Order pleases God. It is God's order for us to come together as a fellowship of believers. It is God's order for us to be presided over by spiritual authority. It is God's order. It is God's, it's God's order for us to be baptized when we believe. It's God's order for us to give offerings in the fellowship that we are connected to. It's God's order for us to take the Lord's Supper when we come together as well. It is God's order when we submit to the leadership of those appointed over us. God's order is even relevant in our own homes. Listen to this, 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. But what I want you to understand that Christ is the head of every man, so therefore we must follow Christ. And the husband is the head of his wife, and therefore the wife must follow the husband as the husband follows Christ. And God is the head of Christ. And therefore Christ is submitted to God just like the man is submitted to Christ, and just like the woman is submitted to the man who is submitted to God, who is submitted 
uh, who is submitted to Christ, who is submitted to God. You see the order? It's a chain reaction. And that Bible talks about in Psalms 33, as the, as the anointing flow down from the beard of Aaron down to the skirts, so does the blessing flow down from the top to the bottom. That's how it works, people. That's how it works. Remember, where there is no order, there's confusion, chaos, strife. There's no vision, which will eventually bring dishonor to God and give full access to the enemy. The enemy thrives in chaos. You, you want to know how divorce happens, why divorce happens? Chaos. You want to know, know our relationship is messed up? Uh, chaos. Because the, the, where there is confusion, where there is strife, where there is, the Bible says that there is every evil work. The enemy thrives in chaos. Let's go. All right. Summary. We cannot allow our church, we cannot allow our church hurt, our anger, resentment, and bitterness to make us avoid fellowship. When we avoid the fellowship of the saints, we are missing the order or the ordinances of God being carried out by proper authority. God has called certain men to lead and instruct the body. God has called certain men to rightly divide his word and teach his people. When we are offended, we cause ourselves and others to forsake fellowship, to avoid trusting in those that do not agree or those that will teach us to forgive. See, that's why you got to come to church because God will, might put it on my heart, put it on the pastor's heart to, to, because you're harboring some unforgiveness in your heart because somebody hurt you. God would begin to deal with the pastor and here you begin to, you begin him, to hear him teach on forgiveness. And as you teach, as he teaches on forgiveness, that word gets in your heart, it begins to free you from an unforgiving spirit. Oh boy, that's good stuff right there. Many are searching the internet for a word, scrolling for approval or joining with a, sed uh, a sedition that lines up with their feelings because they were hurt by the church they attended. We cannot allow the devil to have it that easy. We must repent for using hurt to shield us from our own failures and low self-worth. We must forgive and get back into the fight. We must partake of the order of God with a fellowship of believers because this is pleasing to God and vital for us in this last hour. Remember, he said, he says, he says, um, Submit to those who have the rule over you, for they watch for your soul. Then he said at the end of that, that scripture, he said, for this is beneficial for you. Order in the house, God's house, and in your house is the way he has ordained for the body of Christ to function. The world has their order. It only brings hurt. It brings slander, depression, sin, and eventually will lead you to hell if you follow. But if we follow God's order, it will lead us to it will lead us to blessing, favor, increase, power, uh, authority, and eventually into eternity uh, in in heaven with Him. Hallelujah! This is God's order. Father, thank you for the Word of God tonight. We praise you and bless your holy name. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your loving kindness. We thank you for teaching us every Wednesday night and every first and third Sunday, giving us words from heaven that we can live by and apply into our lives. And the blessing of God will flow freely upon us and heaven will be open. We thank you for this now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you.